This story begins three days after Abraham circumcised himself. He is already sitting at the door of his tent, eagerly waiting for guests. Suddenly, he spotted three passers-by in the distance. He ran towards them and warmly invited them to his house. These three figures are mysterious because three of them started, and one of them suddenly disappeared. Who are they? Who came to visit Abraham? Is it God? Let's begin. In the book of Genesis, at the beginning of chapter 18, it is mentioned that Abraham encountered three men whom he graciously invited into his tent. Later, one of them informed Abraham about the birth of his son, Isaac. The three figures that visited Abraham were not referred to as angels, but rather as three men. However, when two of them arrived in Sodom, they were referred to as angels. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening. Genesis 19 verse 1 From this, it can be understood that at least two of those men were actually angels. But what about the third man? Was he also an angel? And where did that man disappear to, when the angels went to Sodom? According to interpretation, the three individuals were actually three angels, each assigned a distinct mission. Having fulfilled his mission of announcing Sarah's forthcoming birth, the third angel went on his way. Only two angels continued toward Sodom, as they had two missions left to perform, to destroy Sodom and save Lot. However, the assumption that each angel had a specific mission is not detailed in the scriptures. This explanation is confirmed by the fact that throughout the scriptures, angels are depicted as receiving one mission and then disappearing. One thing remains a mystery, where did the third man go? A study of the verses reveals a hierarchy among the three men. As mentioned, Abraham saw three men, but he turned and spoke to only one of them. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Genesis 18 verse 3 But when it came to the essence of the matter, only one of them announced the birth of Isaac. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year, and Sarah your wife will have a son. Genesis 18 verse 10 Afterward, the two angels went to Sodom, while the third, who was considered the greatest of them, stayed behind to have a conversation with Abraham and inform him about the fate of Sodom. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Genesis 18 verse 17 Here is another explanation of the three mysterious figures. The three men who came to visit Abraham were God and two of his angels. The connection between God's revelation mentioned at the beginning, with the words, Then the Lord said, and the visit of the three guests becomes more understandable. It was God himself who came to announce to Abraham about the birth of his son, accompanied by two angels. After bowing to the ground in front of his guests, Abraham turned to them and said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Genesis 18 verse 3 The word, Lord, is a name for God, representing his divine lordship. Abraham addressed the three people in the singular form. Even though Abraham knew the importance of the situation at this point, he didn't know that he was standing before God. Only when Abraham received the words of the prophecy did he truly understand their significance. Then one of them said, I will surely return to you about this time next year. Genesis 18 verse 10 It was only then that he realized it was not a human guest or an angel speaking to him, but God. It was God himself who spoke to Abraham during the meeting, not an angel. Immediately after the prophecy, 
Abraham graciously accompanied his guests on their way, as it was said. The men turned away and went toward Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Genesis 18 verse 22 Therefore, it would have been more appropriate to write that God stood before Abraham. When the true identities of the three people became clear, this is how things unfolded. Abraham accompanied the people, who were actually God and his two angels, on their way to Sodom. On their way, God gently reminded the angels accompanying him that it was not appropriate to conceal the purpose of their journey to Sodom from Abraham. When the men got up to leave, they looked down toward Sodom, and Abraham walked along with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised him. Genesis 18 verses 16 to 19 Then God turned to Abraham and said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sin so grievous that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. Genesis 18 verses 20 to 21 this explains why only two out of the three men who visited Abraham proceeded to Sodom. The third figure was God himself. He had not yet gone to Sodom, but he had not disappeared either. He stayed to discuss with Abraham the fate of Sodom while the two angels were on their way to Sodom to witness their crimes. Later in the story, the two angels arrived in Sodom in the evening. In contrast to the intentional meeting with Abraham, where God and his angels came to his tent to announce the birth of Isaac, the meeting with Lot was accidental. Lot was sitting at the city gate and, then, he saw the angels. He offered them to spend the night at his home. As mentioned, the purpose of the angels' visit to Sodom was to witness and understand the crimes committed by the people of Sodom. And if the answer is positive, then destroy Sodom. Apparently, the angels wanted to wander around the city, disguising themselves as ordinary people, to observe how they would be treated. Their intention was not necessarily to stay with Lot. This is the reason why they chose to answer Lot. No, we will spend the night in the square. Genesis 19 verse 2 after Lot begged them, the angels agreed to stay in his house. Soon, the people of Sodom gathered and asked to judge the guests. The behavior of the people of Sodom provided the angels with an answer to their question, and as a result, Sodom was sentenced to destruction. Lot was determined to protect his guests who came to his house, even at the high cost of potentially harming his daughters. Through his actions, Lot proved that he was righteous men and, as a result, he is deserving of salvation. Because of this, the angels revealed to Lot that they had been sent to destroy the city. They offered him the opportunity to save himself and everything he had. The two men said to Lot, Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are going to destroy this place. The outcry to the Lord against its people is so great that he has sent us to destroy it. Genesis 19 verses 12 to 13 Lot hesitated and did not leave the city, in order to save him, the angels held his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and took them out of the city. From the moment the angels arrived in Sodom until now, they consistently acted and spoke as a couple. Lot also addressed them as a couple. However, at the moment of being removed from the city, 
Suddenly, a single speaker addresses Lot. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives. Don't look back, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains or you will be swept away. Genesis 19 verse 17 Lot negotiated with that speaker. Who was it that spoke to Lot? In the conversation with Abraham, it was God himself who spoke, not an angel representing him. Notice Lot initially addressed in the plural language. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please. Genesis 19 verse 18 But immediately afterward, he switched to the singular. Your servant has found favor in your eyes. Genesis 19 verse 19 The word, Lord, can be interpreted as indicating the name of God and as the opening of a direct conversation between Lot and God. As God lingered to discuss the fate of Sodom with Abraham, the two angels continued on their way. Lot's address, which begins in the plural and ends with a personal address to God. It is the point where God joined his two angels after finishing negotiations with Abraham about the fate of Sodom. They then proceeded to discuss with Lot his own fate. After God's inquiry with Abraham about the fate of Sodom, it became clear that Lot, the righteous man in Sodom, was protected and could not be harmed. As Abraham argued before God, Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of all the earth do right? Genesis 18 verse 25 Unlike the angels, who were satisfied with placing Lot outside the city, God not only accepted Lot's request to escape to the cadet but also urged him to hurry to get there. It can be said that God appeared to Abraham as a man through the belief that God took on a human form to communicate with him. Another example of this can be found in another verse in the Bible. So the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with great terror and with signs and wonders. Deuteronomy 26 verse 8 On that same night I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of both people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I am the Lord. Exodus 12 verse 12 the redemption of Egypt was accomplished by God himself, not by a messenger. Given the meaning of whether it was God himself or his messenger, it would be wrong to interpret the words in the Bible differently. The Bible explicitly states that it was God who spoke to Abraham, not an angel. In the Bible, God is depicted as a relatable human figure. He experiences emotions, is connected to his heart, expresses regret, and displays both anger and compassion. His image represents the essence of humanity, and it is in this image that man was created. Although it is usually not possible to see God, there are exceptional cases where this can happen. Moses had the incredible privilege of seeing God and speaking with him. The Lord would speak to Moses face to face, as one speaks to a friend, Exodus 33 verse 11. Isaiah said, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, Isaiah 6 verse 1. If you know other stories that we have not mentioned, please share them with us in the comments below. We hope you learned something new today. If you did, give this video a like and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more informative and entertaining content. Thank you so much and see you next time.